In this video, we're going to cover the scheduling side of the Build Exact system. We're going to start by looking at the easiest ways to build these, where they come from, easy ways to move them around. We'll also look at assigning tasks to people, setting reminders for tasks, and lastly, we'll touch on the printing side of this and different ways that you can export it. First though, I want to jump into the structure itself and what we've got here. So I've used this plus button here at the top right to expand them all and you can minimize them in exactly the same way. But really just want to point out here, the structure that we use is very similar to that of the estimates in that we have the category and sub items. And the main reason for pointing this out is that if I try and move, say this appliance item, which is the main category, I can't actually move it. However, if I go and move the items below it, you'll notice that this appliance one here moves with the items below. So again, really the only point we want to stress here is that we're really only dealing with the sub items throughout this whole schedule. So whether I'm moving them or assigning things to people, I'm rarely doing anything uh, with these main categories. In fact, the only real purpose for having them at all is when, so I minimize things, I can get a really high level view of when things are happening without having to go into the nitty gritty of each single column. So that's the structure. Moving on from here though, let's have a quick look at the different ways of creating these. Now, in my case, what I did when I was back in the estimates costing screen is I was going through and clicking those T buttons on each and every line. And what this is allowing me to do is pick things and where I want them to come through to here. So we often get the question, uh, people ask, hey, you know, which items uh, should I pick? And we've talked about this a little bit in a previous video, but generally we recommend starting with your labor items and then add anything else that you might want to have on here. So common examples um, would be, again, labor, as I mentioned, things like windows are popular because they have such massive lead times. We see permits in here often because people, again, want to check off that that's been covered beforehand. But again, really it all comes back down to how you want to customize it in order to help you around the scheduling side of your jobs. And also to know that once you get a schedule here, whatever it looks like, you can continue to build it up. So you can add more things to these via this plus button here, uh, where these plus button here add whole new categories like say prelims or, or whatever else you might want. And these little plus buttons here will add the sub item into each of those categories. So again, just to summarize that all these items come from the estimate here and you can build onto this as you go. Little note here as well I want to make is you can build this from scratch using the exact same method we just talked about using these plus buttons. And I also want to mention the fact though that if you're finding your schedule to be very repeatable, i.e. Uh, you build um, you know a couple schedules now and then but they're pretty much the same, uh, then you can absolutely go for this templating option here. So we have the option for you to template them and save whole schedules. And again, this is perfect for, again, say, let's, let's say you're doing a lot of single story buildings and they're pretty similar to each other, or even in the instance that you're doing townhouses and you might want to do one whole schedule for one townhouse, save it. And then essentially you can then dump the same schedule in again and again. So just copying it, creating that as a template, and then just re adding that template in over and over again. So again, a really great way of saving a group of scheduled tasks and dropping them in uh, again as you go. We won't go into that much depth of that here, but I just want to note that, that it is absolutely possible here. Now, a rule of thumb though, the more custom your work is, the more likely you'll use those T buttons to bring your schedule to life. Whereas the more repeatable the work is, the more likely you might want to use the template option. So with that being said, we're going to talk about now, how do you move things around? And really there's a couple of things, uh, a couple simple ways to do this. And I'm going to start with all the ways that involve just grabbing and dragging and moving these boxes around. So if I grab something uh, right in the middle and drag it, it moves. And you can do that for any of these sub items. If I put my mouse on the edge, it'll split like that. And when it's doing that, I can click onto it, holding it and I can just change it to do my number of days and just again, simply moving it around. I can do the same for the start date like this. And this little triangle uh, in the bottom left hand corner here, that's essentially setting my progress. So zero is on the left, 100 is on the right, and somewhere in the middle is about 50%. 
And this will start updating not only the colors, but also the progress of the overall schedule. So just to run through the color coding of this, uh, orange means it's in progress. Black means nothing has been done. It's just waiting for its day. And green is completely done. So it's 100%. And you'll notice that as I take this one to green, the main parent category updates itself automatically. So if I minimize them all again, as you can see here, this category is now in progress. And because one of the tasks is done, it will change color automatically. The other column we haven't talked about yet, and I'm just going to move back to find today's date. And if we move this back, you'll actually see this big green line that that's here. That means that's today. And I'll move this before today and you'll see it'll go red. And what it's trying to say here basically is it's saying, hey, you probably should have already done this. Um, so trying to put a little bit of visual urgency on getting those tasks done. And as soon as you tell that you've done any work on it, it'll go back to orange or green to reflect that. Now we won't go into showing you at this moment, but a quick mention as well that all the scheduled tasks will show up on your dashboard and you can filter between different jobs. At that point, you can also filter in the same way that you can use this plus and minus here. This is a parent and child button on the dashboard. And you can say, look, I just wanna see the main categories or actually no, just show me everything. And you can filter that way too. Now, a quick tip just for when you get a new job like this, um, a lot of times people ask what's the easiest way to set it up and it's going to lead us to this cog button for the first time. So if I go in here, I'm focusing on this one for now, automatic dependencies. And again, people will ask what on earth does that mean? And all it means here is the dependencies are um, linked together. So again, basically we're just saying that we're gonna group them up and they're going to automatically push each other around. Automatic obviously just means that if I move something like this here, everything below it will automatically link to it. Um, so it's really good for setting up a whole schedule like this because it allows you to keep moving stuff to the right as you progress along. You don't have to go back to the start and find other things. It's also really, really good if you have say significant delays on site, like big rain delays or other weather uh, related items, because you can just simply grab a task and move it say a week forward and everything moves forward to give you that gap in your schedule to reflect that event. So again, really good for that. With that said, once you have set your schedule up, I absolutely rec recommend turning this uh, off again because 99% of the time you'll want to move just one thing without the rest of the schedule moving with it and following on from that automatic dependencies, we have what we call manual dependencies. And if you've used any other scheduling software, a lot of them call it a critical path. And this is just our equivalent for that, where you'll see that these little dots that pop up at the end of, at the end of that. And again, just these subtasks, I can say uh, link, let's just say link this to this as an example. And here now, now that I've done that, if anything happens with this first task, it will then push the second task around automatically. And again, what it's trying to do there, um, or what this orange link is trying to do, uh, is just con just convert or, or keep the same number of days between the two tasks. So if I shift this out and always make it a day between, or whatever um, I put it, it'll keep that day between as it moves along, keeping weekends in consideration as well. You can link anything to anything, really, more or less. Um, it will tell you if you're being silly and you're making uh, circular links or anything like that. But um, again, you can absolutely create a critical path. Now, I personally really like this one because I think that running through a job, there are absolutely going to be many instances of dependent tasks. But on the other hand, there's certainly going to be many examples where tasks aren't dependent on each other. So a good example might be landscaping. Um, it might be less dependent on things like paint or the drywall or the roofing. Um, so obviously if any of these get delayed, it doesn't really have a huge bearing on our landscaping task. Now, what I've done here is just double click the link and this is how you delete them. So you can put your mouse on the orange, uh, double click, and it'll go, do you want to delete it? And you go, yep. Mainly that's a, a common question we get. So well worth covering in this video. Excellent. So we've looked at how to manually drag them around on this uh, Gantt chart. If you click once, you'll get some edit options. And if you click edit here, it will take you to a big edit box. 
Now, if you're impatient like me and uh, you can really quickly just uh, double click it and it goes straight to this and you notice the same options here. So start date, uh, date duration, you can change progress in here. Um, everyone's a little bit different. I personally love to drag stuff around the schedule. However, if you're less that way, this is absolutely going to be the way to do it here. This screen here you'll need uh, regardless because this is where you do the assigning of tasks. So you can put people's names against them. Note that you can absolutely add new people as you go. And this is also where we're gonna set reminders. So these function best, in our opinion, as a final call reminder. So that is to say that you've organized somebody and if their time has changed significantly, you've let them know and you've just talked with them. But this is just to remind them to say, hey, you know, don't forget, um, you'll have this, we'll see you in two days for this job and it'll send them a text and an email just to confirm that. So again, it's really just a final call. You can send SMS or email, um, or you can pick between them. It's really up to you, but it will send, it will tell you via these buttons um, faded if you can't for any reason send somebody. So potentially if there's no phone number, again, you'll see it's faded out. And you can add notes as well. So often this might be lockbox combos or if the site's already locked up and this just goes with the messages, really convenient thing to send. Now we're gonna jump into this cog and we're gonna look at print options. And there's a few key things that we do wanna have a quick mention here, mainly these two, which is the weekend settings and the non-working days. So by default, all of our schedules, unless you've changed it, will exclude working weekends. So as an example, let's say there's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday as a task, that's gonna be just two days, the Friday and the Monday. And we've really set this for two reasons. Firstly, we kind of hope you're not working weekends if you can avoid it. And secondly, it's better to have left that weekend time blank or not allowed any work there. And this will really just to let you play any catch up. So that time is kind of blacked out and freed up. Non-working days here, this is for public holidays, um, anything like that. And we leave this up to you because what we found over time is that different trades do things differently. There's obviously regional circumstances, different public holidays, and those sorts of things. So what we do here is, uh, and what we recommend is that you go through on your first job of the year. So for example, you might set up your all your holidays and all that other sort of information right on the first job. And then basically it's done for the rest of the year and you don't have to think about it from then on in. That said, if you do have a last minute one and you want to add it in, let's say the this particular date, you can just click on the number at the top and it says, hey, do you want to make this a non-working day? And we're going to go, yep, that's fine. It just makes it blue like this. So you can turn them off the same way. Last little bit that it's worth covering here is just the print options. And you can print it either as a Gantt chart, so visually, or as a list. And there's a couple different reasons why you might uh, want to do one or the other. One thing definitely worth covering here is the Gantt chart. Specifically, it will react to whether it's open or closed, i.e. if you go minimize all this and click print, you'll get a kind of a client facing version. It's what we like to kind of refer to it as it's really just a high level overview. It doesn't show every nut and bolt that we've put in there. And it's very good just to give somebody that wants a rough idea of the project, the, of the schedule. But on the other hand, if you do expand it all and you print it, again, print preview as everywhere, um, this will just give you a fully detailed version and you can see everything on all the sub items, all the links if you have them, uh, all the color coding. And this is again, just great if you wanna stick it up at your site, for example. One question we do get quite often is how do I control whether this prints as 10 million pages or one trunk page? And it's really nothing to do with a build exact. It's more about your print settings. So whether you go and fit it on one page, um, so it's entirely up to your printer and your print settings there. Lucky last here is the task list very valuable, mainly because you can give this to just about anybody and particularly if not wired to think or look at Gantt charts, um, if it's maybe just not their thing. This makes a whole bunch more sense. Um, it's got the key info in there. It has who is doing it, when it starts, when it finishes, how far through you are. And again, it's, it's a great little summary uh, produced in one button. It's also branded to your business and you can use it again for really any number of things. Excellent. That's scheduling and let's keep going.